Okay. So today, I want to talk about a question I got asked about how to write your apps for the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. Now, this is for the developers that want to just write everything in JavaScript, but you want to take advantage of the TypeScript typings so that you get that nice IntelliSense and stuff. But you don't want to write TypeScript. I won't judge, although I'm going to judge a bit for whatever reason, not your bag. That's cool. Do your thing, whatever makes you productive, right? But you also want to write everything in ESM. So you want to use ES, you want to write as if you're using ES modules. But you also want your output to be AMD because you want to take advantage of the CDN for the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. So you don't have to bundle and build your apps, right? Your apps aren't too complicated. They're fairly straightforward. Maybe one, two, a handful of modules even at best, maybe smaller than that. Maybe it's like a single file thing. You don't really need a whole lot. You can do all that work, you know, like a hundred lines of code, maybe less type of thing. And you just want to take advantage of the TypeScript typings, write your code as ESM, but you need AMD output so you can take advantage of the CDN. I'm talking to that developer today. I know you're out there and I know you want to know how to do this. So let's dive right in. Okay, so in the ArcGIS API for JavaScript documentation, there's a whole um, guide page on tooling and ways that you can build the application and just kind of give you an um, overview of everything going on here. We talk about how you can build using the AMD CDN. You're going to write out your AMD code. We talk about how you can use ES modules via NPM and you can write out everything as pure ESM. Um, we have a TypeScript guide showing you how to set TypeScript so you can write out all of your TypeScript stuff. Um, the only combination that we do not have it here is if you want to write your JavaScript, but use the TypeScript typings and then output to AMD and then consume that. That's like the one like off brand kind of uh, method that we don't talk about in documentation. And I'll be honest with you because it just doesn't come up very often. But you know, I know there are still devs out there that might want to take advantage of this. So that's what I want to talk about today, all right? So let's look at this particular project and see what we have going on here. So in my project, I've got my index.html and I'm going to have, have the uh, CDN link for the CSS pointing to the CDN. I've got this location path just to kind of um, set up my local package, right? So I define a global Esri config file with the packages property on it, it's gonna have an array. And this looks just like the old uh, old school dojo config, uh, similar to the way require.js has require config stuff set up. So you can point to local fi files using AMD. That's what we're doing here. And we're gonna load the CDN for uh, version 424, which is currently the latest version as I recorded this video. And then we have an old school script down here to require at main, right? So we're just going to load this file like immediately as soon as the page loads it's our amd and everything's good to go now normally you would write this at main file as an amd file so you have a, a define in there and you uh, load your packet build your modules and stuff and be good to go but you actually want to write your code as esm and have the typescript typings but not use typescript so okay let's talk about that for a second first thing is to do is look at the package json so we only have two dependencies here we have the types ArcGIS JS API, and this is going to point to the TypeScript typings that are deployed to definitely typed, right? So you don't install the S modules here. This is only for the typings. Now you only ever need this if you're writing pure JavaScript and you're not using NPM. So this is a case where you would do it, but normally you would be writing TypeScript and not just regular JavaScript. Now we still install TypeScript. You're not going to write TypeScript, but we'd still install it so that it can help us out. We're going to build with it too. Notice this over here. We're going to, uh, we have a dev script and a build script that are both use using the uh, TypeScript compiler to build our code. Now, how does that work? So we go into TS config here, the module is still going to be AMD. That means the output of the compilation will be AMD files. We're going to allow JS, right? So we get to uh, take advantage of all the cool TypeScript stuff, even though we're writing JavaScript. And you don't have to worry about all this other stuff. This is pretty boilerplate, um, except for this outer. So we define an outer file here where we want to put the compiled code. That's going to go in the app folder. 
that's where the compiled output of our JavaScript is going to go. All right, and we just have a teller to include, and we don't want to include uh, node modules. Okay, so let's get down to business here and actually look at our main.js file. There's nothing there. All right, so we need to start writing some code that we could do some stuff. Remember, we want to write uh, ESM style code, but we're going to output to AMD. So I can just go ahead and start the import Esri map from Esri map. And I, I, I call it Esri map in this case because it comes from Esri map. So that's just what I call it. When I'm working with um, ArcGIS core, I call it ArcGIS map. That's just me. You don't have to do it that way, but I like to do that. Uh, so I'm going to import the map view from Esri views map view. Oops. I don't know why it did that to me, but okay. All right. So I'm already getting some um, errors here. Map view declared, but isn't never used. Esri map declared, but never used. That's coming from the TS server. So right now I have the TypeScript server running, checking all my stuff, validating everything for me. Right, and this is Vim. You get the same behavior in VS Code as well. So now what I can do, I can just go and create my map. So map is equal to new Esri map. And notice I'm getting all the IntelliSense stuff here. So it's telling me I need some properties here. So, okay. So now I can start writing. It says I have a base map that's optional. And the base map is going to be, let's just make it uh, streets vector. If I can spell vector right. Someday, I'm telling you, I'm going to get a video where I spell everything 100% correctly, but that not today. Uh, okay, so that's create a view. So I'm going to say that my, okay, that's ridiculous. I'm going to say my view is equal to a new map view, right? And that map view has some options to it too. So again, I've got a description here from the TypeScript typings. A map view displays a 2D view of the map instance. Wow, that's amazing. I didn't know that. Awesome. Okay, so I can add the map in here. And I can go ahead have the uh, container. And the container is going to be the view div element. This is pretty typical what we use. And let's center the map. I'm going to go ahead and say negative 118 and 34. And we're going to zoom, uh, let's say 12. Awesome. OK, so then I can go ahead and just log out something like uh, view dot when. And again, I get that nice, cool IntelliSense here telling me what my options are here. So my first function here, I'm just going to pass the one function here. And I'm just going to say console.log view is ready. Awesome. And let's just do a build. Um, let's npm run build. And it's going to build our file for us. Okay, great. So now what we can do is we actually look and see inside our app folder here that look at that we've got our amd files so we have uh it does this little bit up here to uh just handle some uh, stuff for us import default stuff when you go from esm to amd that's fine and it's going to write out our amd code for us here now don't mind all this uh stuff in here the way it handles things it's just kind of like the uh, output you get from the typescript compiler but yeah the same kind of work you would get if you use something like Babel to output ESM to AMD. It would look very similar. Okay, so uh, the only thing I didn't do here was a minify it, but I can always set up a minifier to handle that for me. Okay, let's try to run uh, MPX HTTP server at this root. So, okay, so localhost 8080. All right, so let's load this up over here and there we go. Here's our map running. Make the console log a little bigger. A little bigger here and the view is ready and there we go we've got our application running um beautifully no problem not at all okay so yeah that was it i pretty much just want you to show you how you can still write esm style javascript with typescript typings and intellisense without having to use um having to, without having to write typescript It'll just handle it for you. There might be a couple other ways you can handle this. I think you might be able to do this with the JS config and point to the typings the same way. But you know, this works for me and it should work for you. No babble involved. That's special like that. I might want to run this through a minifier um, after the fact, right? So 
that'd be kind of cool maybe you use roll up or something like that for it no big deal um but yeah this is perfect uh this will get you going for your um, small apps that don't require you to have a lot of modules and don't don't need the uh the work of setting up like webpack or something like that i still recommend Vite. i think Vite would definitely be the way to go even for smaller apps but you know if you want to use a cdn you don't want to have the api code um, hosted locally uh, yourself and you want to take advantage of that fast cdn that we got then go for it this will work just fine for you you'll be great so try it out give it a shot uh, don't forget to uh, comment down below ask me any questions like and subscribe and i'll see you next time thanks a lot i just want to let you know that i've started a new podcast called the bounding box where i'll be talking about geo development web development and everything in between you can find it on apple Podcasts, on google Podcasts, amazon music and plenty of other places that you can find podcasts um, there are a few episodes available now we are in a bi-weekly schedule so every other week thank you